Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with All Things Barbecue, and today we're making a smoked crown roast of lamb. So the crown roast of lamb is essentially two or more fringed racks of lamb, uh, just like this one, that are tied together into the shape of a crown. Uh, the idea is that it's a really nice presentation, especially for big events like holidays. Uh, around here, the way we find these racks of lamb is typically already French. This is the way they come in the big box stores. This is the easiest way to get a hold of them. So this is what we're gonna start with today because I think that it's what's most accessible for everybody else out there. Now you can see here, these bones are cleaned really nicely, but sometimes what you'll find is that they haven't been cleaned up all that well and you've still got some of this uh, silver skin or you know tissue, aphasia, whatever it is that you wanna get rid of. And that's really pretty easy. Uh, if you can avoid it, you don't want to have to scrape the bone and, and you can just peel it right off and that'll make things easier. Uh, in this case, that's working out just fine. But this is just for presentation's sake because this looks much better than this. Even after it's cooked, you'll be able to tell the difference. All right, so that's how we want it to look. Now we're also going to want to clean up some of this down here. This is some really tough silver skin. And this is gonna be the portion that you bite into. I mean, you're gonna take your bite right there, so you don't wanna be chewing on that silver skin. Now right here, I'm finding some little bone fragments, so I'm just gonna clean those up a little bit so nobody ends up chewing on them later. But on the back side here, there's not much work to do. There is that skin on the back of the ribs like you'd get with pork ribs, but we're not gonna be eating from this side. Like I said before, all of the meat is up front, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, we got these cleaned up nicely. Now I wanna get them into some marinade, start to tenderize them, and really get some good flavor on them. And we're gonna do that with the Smoke on Wheels barbecue marinade. Now I've mentioned this before about this marinade, but it's a really great savory marinade. Lots of herbs, some lemon and garlic. So even though it's called a barbecue marinade, I really think of it as more of a savory dish marinade. Kind of work that into the meat and we're gonna let this sit for about an hour. While we're waiting on the marinade, I'd like to throw together a little potato dish. Now this has kind of become our go-to potato dish here at All Things Barbecue. It's pretty simple, but really tasty. These are herb roasted smashed potatoes. And it all starts with these baby potatoes. Now this is about two pounds of both white and purple potatoes. And so we're just gonna doctor these up a little bit, add a little extra flavor to them. In this case, we've got some fresh oregano, some fresh thyme, and then we're gonna hit it with our grunt rub, which gives us some nice pepper and garlic flavors. I'm just popping the leaves off the stems uh, here with the oregano. We'll give this a uh, mince and shoot for about two tablespoons of minced oregano. So oregano is an herb that's a bit more delicate than say like thyme. So one of the things that I like to try and do when I'm mincing uh, a finer leaf like this is try and slide your knife through it rather than mashing it down. Uh, what that does is it allows uh, the oil to stay inside the leaves and the oil is what gives us all that aroma. Now if I just mash this down, you'll see that the leaves start to turn a dark color and that oil is leaking out. And these thyme leaves are small enough that we're just going to strip them right into the skillet here with the potatoes. Don't need to chop those up. Just want to make sure not to get any of that hard stem in there with the delicate leaves. And again, we'll go for roughly two tablespoons. All right, now I'm gonna hit all this with some good olive oil, just enough to get it coated. And then we'll come in with our grunt rub. You guys know how potatoes just love to soak up seasoning. They can take a lot of it, so you don't have to be shy. If this needs more salt in the end, we'll make sure to taste it before we serve it. All right, now I wanna cover this up 
get it on the grill, start roasting at 400 degrees. All right, we're gonna throw these on the second shelf of our Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. I'm running hickory pellets today and we're at 400 to start these off. I suspect at 400 this is gonna take 45 minutes to an hour, but we'll be back in about 30 minutes to check on them. And at some point we're gonna drop that temperature down so that we can also be smoking our lamb at the same time. We're gonna slice this lamb into little lollipops to serve. And that meat is really tender, it's really supple. It, it's not fatty, but it almost gives you that feel because it's just so soft when you bite into it. So what I wanna do is find something that can complement and contrast that uh, to really bring the dish together. So in this case, what we're gonna do is take some citrus and some fresh herbs, as well as some olive oil, blend it all together into an emulsion, and it's gonna create this fantastic, bright green, beautiful sauce that's gonna go great not only with the lamb, but also on top of the potatoes. For our fresh herbs here, we've got some Italian parsley, cilantro, baby dill, and oregano. I'm gonna get this minced up and into the food processor. I've been uh, giving the Wustoff Epicure Santoku a test run lately, just seeing how I like it. You know, it's just perfect for this kind of work, I think, and I really have enjoyed it. Makes pretty easy work of the herbs. We're gonna get this down to about a half cup of minced parsley. And we're gonna shoot for a half cup of the cilantro as well. Especially when you're making a, a sauce out of these fresh herbs, don't be afraid to get some of those cilantro stems in there. There's tons of flavor in there, and you're going to pu puree it down anyway, so it's really fine if you got some stems. All right, that's maybe a little much. Again, half a cup. Now for the dill and oregano, we're going to go for about half as much, maybe a quarter cup. All right, just a rough chop on those. In addition to our fresh herbs, we're also gonna get some garlic in there and we'll just slice this up. And let the food processor do the heavy lifting. And before I get to the citrus, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of fresh ground cumin and a couple tablespoons of wildflower honey just to kind of sweeten things up. I want about a quarter cup each of lime juice and lemon juice. All right, now we're just gonna puree this into a fine paste. Scrape down the sides just a little bit. Oh, incredibly aromatic. And of course that cumin pops out right away. It smells fantastic. All right, that is looking pretty good. All that's left to incorporate now is the olive oil. So I'm gonna transfer our herb paste to a mixing bowl. Scale out one cup of our EVOO. And I'm slowly gonna start whisking in a little bit of oil. Now what I'm looking to do is get this so that the oil and the paste aren't separated. And I think just to finish this off, I'd better throw it back into the food processor. And I'm gonna give it just a shake of smoked salt at the same time. And you see how that really brightened up the color. It's very bright, citrus pops out, the cumin pops out, the fat kind of coats your mouth, 
which allows that flavor to carry all the way around. I think it needs just a shake of salt, but beyond that, this is gonna be good. So what I'm gonna do now is throw this into the refrigerator until we're ready to serve it with the lamb. You guys know how I love to do a reverse sear, but when it comes to the crown roast, once this thing's assembled, there's no way for us to sear it at the end. The way this thing's assembled, the bones are facing out and we can't get to that meat. So instead what we're gonna do is put the sear on at the beginning. So that way we still get that flavor from the Maillard reaction, that nice sear on the outside, the browning. And then we still get this flavor from the smoke as it soaks up the smoke at a lower temperature after the fact. It's been about an hour, so we're gonna get these out of the marinade. I'm just taking some of that excess marinade off as I pull it out. However, we'll leave a little bit behind to kind of help bind the rub to the meat. And we're gonna season this with the Cattleman's Grill Steakhouse seasoning. Now this is kind of a Southwest steak seasoning, which is great for lamb. So this will work really nice with the oregano and the cilantro and the sauce, that oregano and the potatoes. Of course, the cumin that we have in that sauce as well. And you can see that I'm just hitting the actual meat. We don't really need to pay attention to the bone side so much. And of course, everything that's under that fat, we're not really eating that anyway. There's just bone underneath there. All right, so let's give this just a minute to set up here. You wanna get a cast iron skillet, just smoking hot, and then some oil that can handle a high, uh, high amount of heat. So like a grapeseed oil, avocado oil, something with a high smoke point. This is just gonna prevent any sticking. and it's instantly aromatic because that heat is working against that rub just to wake everything up. It smells amazing already. So already forming a crust on there. Beautiful. All right, let's flip that over. All right, I'm gonna get these out of here. Okay, I've got that sear on them that I want, so now we can assemble the crown roast. All right, we're gonna start this off by tying two of the end bones together. Right down here at the bottom. And then we're gonna bring everything around and tie these bones together as well. Now from here, what we wanna do is run a string around the bottom of the bones here. That's really gonna to help to form that crown shape. And I'm trying to work this just right under this lip where the bones are, and then we'll pull it tight. And then what we can do to kind of get this thing to sit more round rather than football shaped, we'll take these double bones that are tied together and pull them together a little bit here. Now there are a number of ways that you can tie a crown roast. I know of a, a certain method that requires you to use a needle where you actually go behind the bone through the meat on both ends and then tie it up. Uh, which is also a great method, but for those of you that don't have those tools at home, this is the simplest way to get the same end result. Oh yeah, that's smelling nice. It's gonna check on these for doneness. Oh, they're getting pretty soft. That's good. So what I'm gonna do now is turn this cooker down to smoking temperatures. We'll leave this covered for now. All right, we've made it down to smoking temperatures now. So we're gonna place our crown roast on here. It's a little bit too tall to go on the second shelf, so we'll put it on the main cooking grate. 
And this shouldn't take terribly long, maybe about 45 minutes. Uh, I'll be back in half an hour just to check and see where that internal temperature is. 125 internal temperature is a perfect time to pull this off of here. You can see we've got the potatoes back on here warming up just a little bit so we can mash those up to finish this whole thing off. So you can see how tender these are, but they're not steaming hot. So what we're gonna do is continue to warm them up and melt our butter in here at the same time. Now in the next five minutes while this roast is resting, this is gonna be ready to go. All right, so we're just gonna give these kind of a rustic smash here. We're not gonna try and get a uh, pureed or anything. We'll leave some texture, but we wanna get these mashed up enough to really soak up that butter. And of course, visually, the purple potatoes, you know, really interesting in there. Woo, that's warm. Now I'm almost certain we're gonna need some salt in here, but let's go ahead and have a taste. Really great flavor from that grunt rub, but we are gonna add a little bit of smoked salt to this. Now those potatoes are ready to go. Throw the lid back on so they can stay warm. At this point, I wanna get into that rack of lamb. Let's cut into the crown roast and we'll show you what we're finishing up with. We don't need that anymore. Now what's great about this is you can actually slice this right at the table. And it just looks really cool. Check that out. Nice and pink right there at the top. But 125, nice, medium, rare. That's exactly where we want our lamb to be. We'll do a little base layer of potatoes here. Top that off with the lamb. And then a drizzle of our fresh herb sauce. Bright, beautiful, tangy. Looks incredible. Oh man, so tender. Just perfectly cooked. The cumin jumps out to me, and it complements that slight gaminess of the lamb really well. And then it's really like tangy, which is great. Like I talked about with the suppleness of the meat, that tang really cuts through it. It's a perfect complement, in my opinion. I hope you guys will give this one a try. Let me know what you think about it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, a good deal of these products you see featured in the video from the seasonings, the rubs, the grill, and even some of those tools are available for purchase at atbbq.com. If you have any questions or comments about the cook, please let me know in the comment section down below. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.